everybody i am back with another favorites video i am super excited to share all of my favorite tools with you guys um, and if you are new to my channel i hope you subscribe also if you are enjoying all of these favorite videos please give it, give them a thumbs up and i truly appreciate it uh, and it lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content and leave me a comment down below letting me know what your favorite tool is or a tool that you constantly use all the time with your paper crafting or mixed media, art journaling, anything like that. Uh, these are not in any particular order. I just kind of have them randomly scattered on my desk. Uh, and I did want to say that all of the supplies are listed down below, so be sure to check it out. Um, and I did want to say really quickly that if you are new to my channel, welcome. I have gotten a lot of new subscribers in the last week-ish or so, uh, and I am excited to have you here. I am going to be going to Creativation. Um, it's technically my first time going, so I'm so excited to meet everybody. Um, I will be at the Dress My Craft booth, so if you are going, um, be sure to head on over there in the afternoon. I'll be there in the afternoon um, on each day um, and say hi and so I can meet you. Um, but that's not what this video is about. It is about all of my favorite tools. So let's get started. Coincidentally enough, some of my favorite tools are, in fact, dress my craft tools. Um, I absolutely love, and I'm not on their design team or anything like that. I absolutely love the dress my craft bone folders. These are Teflon. They are so smooth. They are really good quality. Um, she has a ton of different uh, styles uh, because the um, this brand has a lot of dyes where you can make your own flowers and things like that. So there's a lot of different types of bone folders. The one that I use mostly is this one. And this one, this one I use to score my cards in the um, scoreboard. And then this one is to kind of varnish the fold on a card. Um, and they're really, really great. So they have a little pouch. Um, I just keep the ones that I use most in one little pouch here. Um, so just like that. And another one of my favorites, this thing is so cute. Are you guys ready? And I've used this um, in several of my videos. It's this tiny little paper cutter. It's the cutest little thing. I have it right here in my drawer next to me. Uh, that way, if I need to just cut like a picture or something small, I have it right next to me and it's, it's, really, um, it's really convenient. So I like that as well. All right, got some adhesive on my desk. All right, another favorite is the stamp blocks from scrapbook.com. They come in three, or I believe you can buy them separately, but I will link um, the set of three because I think it's cheaper to buy them that way. Um, I like the big one because, you know, obviously for bigger stamps and then, you know, smaller and smaller. I like that the, there's grooves on there. They have the grid so you can line up your stamp. Uh, they're very comfortable very good quality. Mine are dirty. Um, I just don't clean them. <laughs> they probably just wipe off, I'm sure, but I do a lot of mixed media projects, so that's why a lot of my stuff are stained with inks and sprays and all kinds of different things. So the stamp blocks from scrapbook.com are another favorite. Another favorite is this tool in one, and I shared this in my die cut, my favorite die cuts video. I absolutely love this tool. Um, and it's great to have, as you could see, to kind of poke out all of those pesky little um, papers that um, need to come out of that die once you're done die cutting, especially for a really intricate die. Um, and it's really easy to use. I have had mine for a lot, a lot of years. This is just an extra one. Um, just in case. <laughs> um, so yeah, the tool in one is another favorite. All right. Oh, I have my the one that I use right here. All right, we're going to talk about scissors. I love scissors. 
Um, I absolutely love the Tim Holtz scissors and the Tonic Studio scissors, these huge ones. As you could see, they are very well loved. Lots of glue and paint and stuff on them. Um, I recently got the big ones. Uh, I haven't used these as much because I'm, I'm honestly trying to hopefully not get them that dirty. Um, but I really love the smaller ones, these ones. And then I absolutely love the tiny snips to um, uh, fussy cut out smaller images and things like that. So I absolutely love these um, to fussy cut. So a wide range of scissors here. I love them all. I use them all, all the time. Um, and I would recommend all of them. So, yeah. All right, another favorite is my Nuvo silicone spatulas. These are used for spreading uh, paste out, um, whether it's the glimmer paste from Nuvo or uh, modeling paste, whatever. And they are so comfortable and so easy to clean. As you could see, I haven't cleaned mine. I you're gonna see a pattern that I don't really clean my my products that often or my supplies that often whether it's tools or um, stamps or anything like that I just I don't know I feel sometimes that the more gunk is on it the more creative I've been and it just makes my heart happy so um, I know some people with you know are gonna be going crazy because all of my tools are so so messy but um, anyway, so that is another favorite. I absolutely love these. Uh, really easy to use and I like that they're so flexible. Um, and then you can kind of do scraping and you know, they're, these two tools I use all the time for my mixed media projects. So that is another one. All right, trying to find it. This is a tool that I absolutely love but to be honest, I wish it was a little bit better. I I love this tool and I use it all the time, but I feel like maybe I need to invest in something that is a little bit better. If there is anything, let me know. I use the Jewel Picker, the Marvy Jewel Picker. It was really good for, for quite some time and then just all of a sudden it just stopped being so sticky. I don't know what it is. Um, I've always kept the caps on, um, but this is used to add like little enamel dots or sequins and things like that to pick them up. Um, let me show you. All right, so we have some sequins here and you know, you can use it and to pick up the little sequins and add them to cards and projects. It makes it easy um, instead of kind of hassling with, with it so tiny and then I add the glue. Um, to the back and add it to a project. So that's what this is for. Um, yeah, a favorite, but I'm being honest, which you guys appreciate, I think, that I wish it was just a little bit better. So if you are in the market for something to pick up little sequins and things like that, maybe do a little bit more research and find something that is just a little bit stickier for longer, I think. Um, or maybe I've just maxed out the life on it. I don't know. All right, the next thing is blending brushes. So you're going to see two different types here. I have the scrapbook.com. I forget what these are called exactly, but they're blender brushes. So I've used them for inking with the, the Distress Oxide inks. Um, and they give a nice faint coverage it's very light and it's it's they're nice to have um, I love the look of them I love the wood um, as much as I've used them I I love them um, so I would recommend them if you are looking for more of a kind of a subtle ink blending look or something like that um, this this tool is definitely nice to have as you could see it's kind of tapered at the end um, it helps blend out those colors um, really, really well. So these I would definitely recommend. Nuvo has some as well, um, but I tend to grab the scrapbook.com ones more uh, than the Nuvo ones. 
you guys know that I absolutely love the um, makeup brushes to blend my Distress Oxides and do ink blending with. So I would highly recommend these. I use them all the time. Um, I did get some new ones that I had. I don't think I've used yet. I haven't broken them in yet. I think, yeah, I got another set so that I can use them with my dye inks, uh, like my Alta New dye inks, and then I use one set for uh, Distress Oxide inks. I haven't labeled them just yet. I haven't really been doing any ink blending, so I really didn't think of it um, just yet. But yeah, the makeup brushes for ink blending are amazing. And I got mine on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Some people say they even have them at the dollar store. They work the same. Um, just find what works for you. <laughs> to be honest, they're all pretty much the same design. Probably the same bristles and everything, just marketed differently, you know. You know how it is. All right, so that's that. Another favorite is my Heat It craft tool. I absolutely love this um, to dry things or not to heat emboss. I know I said this in, I think I shared this tool in my mixed media favorites. Uh, that you don't want to heat emboss with this tool. Um, you want a heat embossing tool for that. This one is just more to dry inks and sprays and that, that sort of thing. So I love this tool. All right, another favorite is this Tonic Studios uh, guillotine, guillotine <laughs> trimmer. Still cannot say that word. Um, I absolutely love it. I want to end up getting the bigger one, but I actually have a, a big trimmer that I use when I'm cutting down like 12 by 12 paper. Um, but this one I use most of the time. It sits um, in a drawer kind of next to my desk, so it's easy access and it's small. So when I'm making a card or something, I can have it on my desk and it's really nice to have. So I love this Tonic Studios trimmer. And the last thing, which probably shouldn't be a surprise, is my Tonic Studios uh, stamp platform. This thing has, as you can see, has is very, very well loved. Um, and I absolutely love it. You can turn it, whether you're using rubber or clear. Um, the magnets are great. It's held up very, very well. Um, I didn't have much success with the travel platform. It what it never gave a good impression. Um, some people said the same thing about the regular size one. I've always, it's always done good for me. So I don't know, maybe it depends on the stamp, how you're pushing down and you know, all different sorts of factors play into that. So anyways, that's another one of my favorites. I'm pretty sure you can still get this, although it's discontinued. Um, but I think that there still might be some available for purchase, uh, through scrapbook.com, um, and, you know, kind of ending out the supply of, of this. So you got to get it while you can. <laughs> All right. That is going to be my favorite supplies. I almost forgot that the last thing, which should have been probably my first thing because I absolutely love this mat. It is the Easy Clean Tonic Studios Matte Nouveau. I think it's a Nouveau um, line. Uh, it is absolutely amazing. And I can't remember who it was, but somebody had said, mine's so like stained and stuff. How is yours so clean? And I had just gotten it and I, I don't know, I have definitely used this thing a lot and it is amazing. So before I swore by the Ken Oliver mat, which was amazing, but I just, I liked that it wasn't, it wouldn't slide around, but I just didn't really care for the stickiness on the top of the mat. Um, this one is a mix, a good mix between the Tim Holtz mat and the Ken Oliver mat because it is non, it's grippy on the, on the backside like kind of sticky so it'll stick to your work surface so it won't slide around but it's 
um, very sleek and smooth on the top. It's not sticky on the top. And this one is pretty large. It fills up a good portion of my space here. And I use it all the time um, for ink blending, mixed media projects, layouts, altering projects, um, all sorts of different things where I want to try and keep most of my work surface clean. Uh, I do have a clear mat, which is actually a mat used for um, like an office chair. It is, I did have to cut it just a, a little bit to fit on my desk, but it's pretty um, narrow and long. So it's good for a desk surface. I have it from one end to the other. Uh, and then I also have the grid um, mat underneath, which before I had it on top and it got so full of gunk and stuff, I had to replace it. So this one underneath is nice and clean. And um, I find that the, this clear mat is easier to clean than the, um, the grid mat underneath. But anyways, this is an amazing product to have, especially if you do a lot of um, alcohol inking or anything like that. The alcohol ink will probably stain this, um, or if you do like paints or anything like that, um, this is definitely a good thing to have. So yeah, that's it. I'm sure I have a few more here and there, but that's pretty much what I use on the majority of my projects. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave me a comment down below letting me know what your favorite supplies are. And if there's something that you want me to try, I am willing to try anything, um, a supply, adhesive, uh, anything. So um, leave me a comment down below letting me know and yeah, I think that's it. I always forget if I'm forgetting something. That's pretty bad, but all right. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys later. Bye.